Carmen, in trying to discern what is the, the root of consciousness, we have to ask, what, is, what are my perceptions? What am I as a, as, a, as a creature, a sentient creature? And I think and I feel. Right. Uh, I mean, that's, that's basic. Yes. Uh, how does our brain do those things that uh -huh. seem so simple and so organic and so unified? Yes. What is thinking and what is feeling? Well, I wish I could really answer <laughs> your question, but there is little doubt that every action that uh, our nerve cells are a part of performing is due to humors, due to substances, uh, uh, substances within nerve cells. For example, there... Uh, we have a region in the brain, it's at the base of the brain, very important for visceral function, called the hypothalamus. Now, the hypothalamus is connected to a very important gland. It's the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus receives in input from the frontal lobes, from the cerebral cortex, and from all other aspects of brain. And it informs the hypothalamus, or the hypothalamus informs the pituitary whether or not there should be a, 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 an increase in a certain hormone in the body. Now, there's no question that hormones throughout the body uh, also are part of our emotional circuitry. There are areas in the brain that we know are uh, important with regard to aggression. Uh, and uh, our emotional state. So these are normally areas in the brain that are lower in their, uh, 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 in their uh, phylogenetic uh, 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 other animals have comparable feelings of aggression and, uh, uh, and uh, are capable of sleep and wakefulness as well. But it's the cerebral cortex and especially the frontal lobes that control these. The manner in which we allow ourselves to have some of these uh, uh, visceral uh, reactions. Uh, so, uh, uh, as I say, there are, there are systems and counter systems that allow the uh, nervous system to, uh, uh, to accomplish the behavioral uh, aspects of, uh, of our lives. I feel that uh, it's a very, a very difficult question to answer in, a, uh, in an absolute specific way, but uh, the, the manner in which I visualize the nervous system is that it's the organ that controls us and that uh, in, in, uh, uh, and at the same time which we control. So we're able to, uh, uh, through our learning and uh, through our experiences, to uh, develop the type of personality we have. Uh, uh, it would seem that in this process there's a great deal of communication, a great deal of feedback, a great deal of communication between the two parts of the sides of the brain, the two hemispheres, a great deal of communication between higher levels in the brain and right. lower levels in the brain, and back and forth. Absolutely. It's, you know, intercommunication just seems to be... Well, we have, uh, we have hundreds of uh, millions of nerve cells that are constantly acting uh, at all times. Uh, we don't know uh, how many are yeah. acting at this instant <laughs> in contrast to what we're acting five minutes ago. But we do know that we have an ongoing behavior and uh, that behavior is learned. We learn how to control our animalistic tendencies. Mm. And that is, uh, in my opinion, a frontal lobe, anterior frontal lobe inhib inhibition of these visceral functions. Uh, learning uh, is the basis of, in, in my view, of our, uh, uh, of our humanistic behavior. Uh, so you would say that one of the 
distinguishing characteristics of human beings is our ability to control, often to inhibit, these visceral or instinctive, call it what you will, behaviors. Yes. And that's a learned process yes, of which indeed. the frontal lobes are the, 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 the repository of that, of uh, that inhibition. It is not to say that other animals don't learn, sure. because they do. I mean, if you have uh, a dog, for example, uh, a, a, a dog will learn uh, when his dinner is going mm -hmm. to be given. Uh, and if it's not given, uh, the, the dog will let you know about it. So uh, all animals have an ability, a certain ability to learn. The beauty of the human condition is that we make fine distinctions in, uh, uh, in, in what we learn and how we put this information together to... Uh, a result in, in, in complex thoughts and complex uh, uh, behaviors. Let's take a, a specific example, okay. uh, whether uh, a feeding behavior yes. or sexuality, uh, yes. uh, that we have the, the two process of, of, uh, of, of, of needing it and then being satisfied with yes, it. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, feeding behavior is a perfect example because uh, 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 we're, we're quite certain uh, that uh, certain uh, 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 accumulations of neurons in a certain part of the hypothalamus must be intact for us to uh, ingest an appropriate amount of food. Uh, if the area is destroyed, there is no satiation. We just keep eating and keep eating and keep eating. I'm not saying that that is the cause of obesity. We don't know you know, why certain people are obese. But we do know that if those areas are destroyed, there's no question that obesity will occur. In contrast, not too far from this region is an area which, if destroyed, inhibits our interest in food. And we have uh, uh, no interest in, in eating at all. In fact, we become cachetic and uh, uh, we get... Uh, 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 we, we can go to, uh, literally to, to death without, uh, without ingesting food. And so these areas are in our brain. We think, uh, I'm hungry, I eat, is, is the common way you would think about it. And if I'm not hungry, I, I don't eat. And that's sort of a, a, a gut feeling. Yeah. But, but that's not the case. The information is coming from the gastrointestinal system, whether nerves or hormones, or into this area of the hypothalamus. That's right. And also, uh, I had a I had a, a postdoctoral scholar from Poland who uh, was with me for a number of years, Dr. Wanda Rivitska, who uh, specialized in preference of foods, mm -hmm. uh, how we developed a. Uh, uh, a love of a particular type of food, and not only that, but the way in which that food is uh, prepared. Uh, why we don't eat soggy toast, for example, <laughs> but we have nice crisp. In other words, there there are elaborations on these behaviors that are learned behavior, uh, 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 make it as a part of our total personality. And this is something that uh, we do involuntarily, or can we do it voluntarily? I, I'm trying to teach myself how to like broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you, you and President Bush. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the food preference was uh, Dr. Rubitska's specialty. And, uh, uh, for example, uh, it is amazing how she could stimulate a certain part of the brain and she would have cats eating banana oh. in, 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 <laughs> in, and eventually preferring banana to meat, for example. Uh, these are carnivores. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, uh, this was... Uh, now, would that, that occur only during stimulation or would that be a behavior that would be then learned without stimulation? Once it was learned... Then, oh. then, then they would prefer bananas. Even without stimulation. Even without stimulation. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway. Well, that's, a, that's a fascinating example. Uh, oh, it is. It is. 
because mm -hmm. it, it shows the, the critical importance of learning yeah. can even overcome or change what we think of as instinctive yeah. behaviors. Well, Dr. Uh, Vyavitska was the student of the last student of Ivan Pavlov. And so she learned this, uh, this uh, 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 her behavioral uh, techniques in Poland, where her teacher uh, uh, went after his uh, uh, studying with Pavlov, uh, and went to Warsaw, and uh, that's where Dr. Rivitska came to UCLA. From. And I invited her here, and she was with us until she passed away, which was about 25 years. Mm. Uh, her husband was a physicist, and eventually he was able to come to. Uh, in those days, it was difficult for people uh, in those East European uh, countries to uh, come to America. So when we look at a brain that thinks and feels and we understand the system's fascinating stuff, at the end of the day, after your incredible career, what does brain thinking and feeling enable you to uh, appreciate about human consciousness? Yeah, well, uh, certainly the brain is the organ of behavior. And uh, uh, the experiences that we have had in life uh, have been principally responsible for the personalities that we develop. Uh, we have been uh, reinforced uh, in uh, our, our actions, uh, if we uh, have pleased someone, and we have been reprimanded in our actions if we haven't pleased someone. All of this has come to develop the, the type of person that we become, the personality that we uh, express. And certainly, this happens in the nervous system. This does not happen in the liver. It doesn't happen uh, in the GI tract. It happens in the brain. The brain is capable of influencing these other organs. But in fact, when we think of mentation, when we think of the development of personality, when we think of the ability to, uh, to uh, uh, recall and have a memory, this, these are brain functions. These are not functions of other organs. 